And the Bible says that in verse 37 of Acts chapter 2, the response of the people to the words of Peter was, was this. When they heard him say that, they, they were pricked in their heart. They were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What can we do to fix this? We understand that we, we, what we did was wrong. We understand that we crucified our Messiah. How can we fix this? How can we correct what was done wrong? You see, at that moment, they believed that Jesus was their Savior. At that moment, they believed that He was their Messiah. They believed that He had died for them. They believed that He had conquered the grave. They believed that He loved them, that He cared for them. You see, Peter had convinced them in that moment, but Peter had not stopped preaching. He was going to continue his message. You see, believing that Jesus is your Savior is wonderful. It's awesome. It leads you to ask questions. It leads you to the house of God. But that's not the end of the message. That's not where Peter stopped preaching because he said in verse 38, hallelujah, repent. This is the response to what you need to do. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins or the forgiveness of your sins. You see, baptism is more than just coming out in your faith or going public with your faith. Baptism is so much more than just joining a church or becoming part of a church. But in baptism, the Spirit of God moves. Jesus moves through baptism and your sins are washed away, never to be remembered again. Hallelujah. And you can begin a new life in Jesus Christ being born of the water. But he continued to preach. He didn't stop at baptism. He said, and you Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But he didn't stop there. He kept preaching. He said, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That means that the promise is for everybody. Hallelujah. That means that the promise of the Holy Spirit is for everybody. It is for whosoever will. It doesn't matter if you're Australian. It doesn't matter if you're Chinese. It doesn't matter if you're South American. If you're North American, it does not matter. It is for you. The promise of the Holy Spirit is for you. But there's more to that scripture than just that. You see, Peter, he chose his words very carefully. When he said, the promise is unto you and to your children. He knew who he was preaching to. He knew the crowd that was gathered there that day. He was preaching to the same crowd that just 50 days earlier had screamed in, in, in anger, in wanting to destroy Jesus. They had cried out, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. Peter was preaching to the same crowd that day. Let his blood be upon us and upon our children. Little did they know that 50 days later, that same blood, oh God, that same blood that they called out for, that same blood that they called out for out of anger, that same blood that they called out for out of hatred would be the same blood that would cover them in baptism. Hallelujah. For Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 tells us that Jesus loves us and he washes us from our sins with his own blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He washes our sins with his own blood. They asked for condemnation, but God offered to them salvation. They asked for condemnation, but, but God offered to them salvation. And he's offering the same thing to you here this morning. He's offering salvation to you here in this place. There are people under the sound of my voice that think that they may have gone too far, that they have done too much, that they have gone too far for the grace of God to reach, that this gospel, this is you know, good for you, but not for me because I've done too much. But I want to remind you here today, I just want to remind you that Jesus started his church. 
He started his church on the day of Pentecost with disciples that abandoned him, a preacher that denied him, and a crowd that crucified him. That is how Jesus started his church. Hallelujah. That means he was saying from the very beginning that there is no sin too big for my God. That there is no sin too big for my God to handle. That there is no depth to where his mercy will not reach. That there is nowhere where his grace will not go. Hallelujah. It is for everybody. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter who, how far you have gone. This gospel is for everybody. And that is the message of Pentecost. That his grace is sufficient for you. That if you come in faith and believing, he can and will transform and change your life.